As you may already know, Saudi Arabia is famous for being the largest sand desert with harsh climate change and little to no rainfall. How has Saudi Arabia been coping with these excessive limitations? Today we will be revealing a miraculous phenomenon that will keep you amazed because it's nothing like you've seen before. Join Cosmic Inquiries in unraveling the mystery of Saudi Arabia's agricultural development, which has astonished and shocked scientists globally. Stay tuned to this video to uncover all the facts. Look deep into the history of Saudi Arabia, and you will see that Saudi Arabia is a nation in Western Asia, formerly known as the State of Saudi Arabia. It is the second largest Arab nation in Western Asia and the Middle East, and encompasses most of the Arabian Peninsula, with a land area of about 2,150,000 square kilometers. It is also the fifth largest country in Asia. But recently, a miraculous turnaround has happened, and Saudi Arabia has used numerous modern technologies to solve its problems and turn many of its desert areas into green farmland. The typical annual rainfall in Saudi Arabia is only four inches. Saudi Arabia is one of the world's water-scarce countries. Even though 97% of its population has access to drinkable water, 500 cubic meters per person per year is the absolute water shortage threshold. Only 89.5 cubic meters per person are produced annually in Saudi Arabia. Even though the kingdom has high water access rates, severe overconsumption and a lack of trustworthy renewable water sources have elevated this problem to a top priority. The most valuable natural substance in Saudi Arabia, in the opinion of many, is oil. However, water is becoming more valuable due to the water problem in Saudi Arabia. The oceans and groundwater, which are quickly depleting, are the two main water sources. In addition, 98% of all naturally occurring freshwater is contained in the earth in Saudi Arabia. Each makes up 50% of the water utilized. Previously a mainstay of the Saudi diet, dates are now primarily grown for international humanitarian assistance. Agriculture policy is mainly the responsibility of the Ministry of Agriculture. Other government organizations include the Grain Silos and Flour Mills Organization, which buys and stores wheat, builds flour mills, and creates livestock feed, and the Saudi Arabian Agricultural Bank, SAAB, which distributes subsidies and offers interest-free loans. Additionally, the government finances research projects and provides land distribution and reclamation programs. The private sector has significantly aided the growth of agriculture in the kingdom. This is largely because of government initiatives that provided long-term interest-free loans, technical assistance, support services, financial incentives like free fertilizer and seeds, inexpensive water, fuel, and electricity, and duty-free equipment and raw materials imports. A network of dams has been constructed to capture and make use of valuable periodic floods. Through deep wells, huge underground water reservoirs have been accessed. Desalination facilities have been constructed to create fresh water from the ocean for use in cities and industry, freeing up other sources for farming. Additionally, infrastructure has been put in place to handle industrial and urban runoff for agricultural irrigation. Large swaths of the desert have been converted into productive farmland due to all these endeavors. In 1976, there were fewer than 400,000 acres of land under agriculture. By the 21st century, there were millions of acres. What's astonishing is that although the majority of Saudi Arabia's terrain is covered by desert, a surprisingly large number of indigenous plant species can withstand the harsh climate. Now, under the umbrella of the Saudi Green Initiative, efforts are underway to preserve and even increase the amount of vegetation across the kingdom. From its desert vistas in the north to the southern region of Asir, the kingdom is home to an abundance of vegetation, including more than 2,000 wild plant species belonging to 142 families. According to the Saudi National Center for Wildlife, however, about 600 of these species are classified as endangered, and 21 are already thought to be extinct. On the surface, planting 450 million trees may appear ambitious, let alone the planned greening of the desert, particularly in light of the kingdom's rapid urbanization. But in reality, the Saudi government has established specific SGI objectives to integrate green areas harmoniously into urban growth, including parkland and afforestation,
within the bounds of the kingdom's desert cities. To counter the potential harm of urban sprawl in these cities, unmanaged surfaces will be greened, which will not only help to slow down global warming, but also reduce carbon dioxide emissions, enhance air quality, open up possibilities for more active lifestyles, and sustainably beautify cities. Meanwhile, in more rural areas, the greening initiatives must contend with encroaching desertification, scarce water supplies, and record high temperatures, all of which are considered to be the result of human-caused climate change. Approximately 6% of the kingdom's total surface area is covered by the King Salman World Nature Reserve in northern Saudi Arabia. About 300 different animal species live there, along with rare archaeological heritage sites, some of which date back as far as 800 BC. It also contains mountainous terrain, vast plains, and high plateaus. With the assistance of volunteers and in collaboration with the Modern Reserves Administration, 100,000 seedlings were recently planted as part of an initiative by the Reserves Authority and partners to support SGI objectives. According to a KSNR spokesperson, Saudi Arabia is dedicated to increasing the vegetation cover as they have already accomplished by planting 600,000 plants and having many seed sowing campaigns to increase the vegetation in the reserve. Perennial trees and shrubs restore the ecosystems damaged by the desert. These plants are endemic to the habitats of the desert and have evolved to withstand harsh conditions such as drought and high temperatures, and they don't need a lot of water for irrigation. The primary nursery installation is just one of many projects that make up the reserve's strategic goal to create a seeding program. However, water continues to be a significant obstacle to conservation efforts and green initiatives in the kingdom. The people of the Arabian Peninsula developed freshwater wells over the years to sustain life and survive. Within two to five years, the beneficiaries must cultivate at least 25% of the total land area. When the farmer complies, he is given complete ownership of the land. With a focus on diversification and increased efficiency, the government continues to support new farmers as they execute capital-intensive projects. Under the development plans, the government also funds and supports research initiatives to create new food crops, increase harvests, and plant strains with higher pest resistance to increase farm productivity. It was a remarkable accomplishment for a nation that must import 90% of its fresh food. The easy addition of clay and water had transformed the harsh, desolate Arabian desert into a lush orchard. Parts of Egypt's Nile Delta thrived in the 1980s despite being close to the desert. It had long been a dependable location to farm because of its reputation for fertility. Due to its productivity, the ancient Egyptians shifted their focus from subsistence cultivation to creating a strong civilization that gave rise to cultural achievements that are still celebrated thousands of years later. However, despite sustaining communities in the area for millennia, that fertility vanished in just a few short years. The Nile would spread onto the plains of the Egyptian Delta in late summer each year, before subsiding again. As a consequence, the once fertile lands turned barren, and the agricultural methods that had sustained the region for centuries became unsustainable. The story of the Nile Delta serves as a cautionary tale about the delicate balance between human development and the environment. In the case of Saudi Arabia, the transformation of its desert landscape into productive farmland is indeed a remarkable feat. The commitment to sustainable agricultural practices, the utilization of advanced technologies, and the ambitious Saudi Green Initiative all contribute to addressing the challenges posed by water scarcity and climate conditions. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. Tell us your opinions in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the video on your screen for more mind-bending content. Until next time, keep gazing at the stars. This is Cosmic Inquiries signing off.